What if I told you that I could tell you if a speaker is going to sound good or bad just by looking at it? And that, well, I could teach you how to do it as well. And not only that, that if you were shopping for speakers, there's some telltale signs of which speaker not to buy and which speakers to buy. And if you're designing them, well, it gives you an idea of what not to do. Yeah, I think that'd be pretty cool. And I think you'd like that too. So let's do that. All right, guys, so today we're going to be talking about, well, edge diffraction and how it compromises your speaker design or compromises speaker designs. But really, in order to do that, I need to show you some speakers. So let's go take a look at some of these over here. All right, so these speakers are called the Uglies, and you can kind of get an idea of why uh, they're, well, they're ugly, and I painted them that way specifically to make people know that, hey, these speakers could sound great and they could look terrible. And boy, do these things sound great. But because I did some work into this and part of it is to do with edge diffraction. So what, what is edge diffraction? Why does it matter? And why do you even care? And how does it help you pick out a better speaker? Well, it's pretty simple. What happens is when you take a look at where your tweeter or your woofers are placed, there is a baffle here in which the sound can diffract off of. Now, diffraction is kind of a hard thing to explain, but just imagine that at a fixed point, whenever it comes to a sharp edge, uh, that sound frequency, instead of traveling forward towards the listener, instead diffracts off this edge and starts scattering in all different directions. And because it hits that edge and starts diffracting in all different directions, it takes your frequency response that was supposed to be very linear, and it starts adding peaks and valleys. And that's because it's starting to add phase relationship that wasn't there, which creates a less than desirable frequency response. Now, the good news is there are different types of designs that diffract worse than others and some that will do better. And today we're gonna to talk about those. We're gonna show you well, which ones are better and which ones to really keep your eye out on and well, not buy. So instead of starting with the uglies, which we could do, I wanna start with this. This right here is, well, it's a cylinder, it's a piece of pipe, a piece of plastic. Uh, you probably wouldn't use this as an actual uh, speaker enclosure, at least I hope not. However, a lot of people do use PVC pipe, and you'll see it all the time. You'll see someone uh, take like a PVC enclosure and they'll stick a tweeter in here. So I actually have a tweeter. So for demonstration purposes, we'll put this tweeter in this pipe. So just imagine that that tweeter is directly centered in this pipe. Here's the problem. We already mentioned that edge diffraction is every time it hits a sharp object on the edge, it'll diffract off there. Now, what I didn't tell you is that the distance between the center of that tweeter or that speaker and the edge is the frequency at which it's gonna diffract at. And so that's problematic because when you have a cylinder like this and you have the tweeter directly in the center or a woofer mid-range, it doesn't really matter what it is, that is going to diffract at the exact same frequency all around this. So it's going to add a lot more diffraction than you would typically have. So when you see a, a cylinder and you see a speaker right in the center, that's the absolute worst type of enclosure that you could possibly buy. So if you see something like this and you see a speaker with this on here, run, don't buy it, because that's gonna give you your worst response possible. Now, if we go off that same principle that every time there's a sharp edge, we're going to have a major diffraction, we can kind of take a look at the next one. So this is one of the speakers that I designed called the Better Than Bose. And these speakers are, are beautiful. I think that I absolutely love these speakers. However, they have a major design flaw because they were designed after a speaker that was already flat, which is the Bose Cubes. The Bose Cubes, once again, have the speaker directly center in the middle. And they have four edges, which are identically spaced. And so once again, our diffraction is going to occur here, 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 and here at the exact same time and around the edges where we're going to get a much more jagged response than we want. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw some diagrams up here so that you can kind of see what's happening. But you can see that although it is better than the cylinder, it's still not ideal. Ideally, we wouldn't have those waves in here at all. And so this is another type of design that diffraction is really going to have a problem with, and I would say run away 
from this type of design. Anything that's going to be directly centered is probably not the greatest design for edge diffraction. So with that in mind, what you might find is some manufacturers doing something like this. This is a Mookie. Uh, this is by far the worst speaker I've ever reviewed or ever listened to. Don't buy this speaker. But we can learn something from this speaker. What we see is that this tweeter is actually off-centered. And so what they've tried to do is try to create the distance bigger from here to here to here, which is a really good idea and what some people will do to minimize edge diffraction. And that is one way to do this. However, Mookie really messed up because what they did end up doing is that the distance from here to here is basically exactly the same. So your edge diffraction is really still occurring at the same frequency in two spots. So it really was no different than just putting it in the center. I think this was really more for design looks than anything else, but we can learn that an off-center tweeter does help with edge diffraction. There are some definitely cons to offsetting a tweeter, but we're not gonna talk about that in this video at least. Let's go ahead and make our way back to the uglies. Now, these, you can tell, are centered. The tweeter is centered, which by the way, does have some major acoustical benefits to it. And I am not a proponent of saying don't center your tweeter. I actually like centered tweeters more than anything else. But it will have diffraction on both sides and diffraction on the top. But one thing you'll notice is that the top distance is different than the sides. And that's one of the things that you're gonna wanna keep in mind when you're building or designing a speaker. You're gonna want, uh, whatever the distance from these sides are to be different than your top because that creates a different diffraction point so it won't add to the diffraction at that same frequency. You want to make sure that those are different sizes as much as possible. So you're probably wondering what is the best enclosure? I mean a rectangle is probably the easiest to build but it's not necessarily the best. The best is well one of the ones that's really the hardest to build but let's go ahead and show it to you. This is a soccer ball, or in some countries they call it a football, but we're gonna call it a soccer ball because we're in America and that's what it's called in America. So sorry footballers, this is a soccer ball. And this is actually the best enclosure for a speaker, period. I don't just mean a soccer ball, that's just weird. But what I do mean is, well, a sphere. So whether this be a globe or whether this be a bowl or whatever, a sphere is absolutely the best thing for a speaker. And the reason is well, fairly simple. When those sound waves try to go to diffract off anything, there's nothing really for it to diffract on. It can go around the sphere. And so we don't have to worry about that diffraction nearly as much. Believe it or not, this is almost a perfectly linear response, exactly what you want. You'll see a lot of DIYers and what they'll do is they'll take Ikea bowls. You actually uh, can go to Ikea and you can buy some of their bamboo bowls. They're not very expensive. And you'll see them cut out a speaker directly in the center, place it in there and glue the two bowls together. And by doing that, they've created a sphere in which they have a great response for baffled diffraction. So if you do see a speaker with a sphere for your tweeter, your mid range or your woofer, that's actually a really good design typically. I mean, there are other reasons why the speaker may not sound good, but at least for diffraction purposes, great idea. Now, when we take some of these principles, we're gonna to start to realize that there's some things that we can actually do to baffles to help them sound better. And so, since we know that rounding, for example, helps the waves go around the corners without diffracting, a round over is a great way to cut down on diffraction. Though it does have to be a larger roundover, just these little smaller roundovers isn't usually going to have a huge benefit. Another thing is what we call a chamfer. So if you see speakers that have like a 45 degree bevel on them at the top and the sides, that also is a way to cut down on diffraction and it sure can help. Now all these things are things that you wanna look for when you are building, designing, or looking to buy a speaker. And by taking these simple principles into account when you're buying or building a speaker, well, you will have a much better speaker in the end. So I hope that you learned something. And if you did, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and well, hit the thumbs up. All right, guys, it's Toyd's DIY Audio, and I'm out. Okay.